There's going to be a lot written. Uh, people will say things about myself, about my staff, about our organization, and they're welcome to their opinion. But it's who we believe. What, what, what do we believe in ourselves? How do we picture ourselves? Okay, and uh, we need to become our own experts. Uh, you know, people say, "Oh, we, we don't expect them to contend." I said, "How do you know that? Yeah. How do you know that?" I I I, I disagree. I call bull. <laughs> okay, it's just the way it is. We, we compete. Uh, people, I had three strikeout games fouled out on the fourth and came up. Whoops, sorry, just won the game. You guys had your fun the whole game. Okay, I came back and I got you when it counted, and that's what we're looking to do. Ryan Roberts drives a deep left field. Incredible! The Diamondbacks win it! Are you watching Milwaukee? Did you just see that? Darren, did he just hit a grand slam? Did that just happen? Did Ryan Roberts just hit a walk-off grand slam? I'm not sure. Game number 162 of a magical 2011 season. That was fun to walk through last night, wasn't it, folks? And can we all believe that Kirk Gibson said what he said six months ago about this team? And Ryan Roberts did what he did last night. It's the Dodgers. It's the Diamondbacks. This is it for the season. The National League Western Division champions here in the year 2011. Hi, folks. Welcome back to the ballpark. We've had fun all year long with you immediately. We're going to miss you when we say goodbye. This is Mark Grace. My name is Darren Sutton. Welcome back to the ballpark. First, a quick comment on what you saw last night. I'm still in. No, I'm stunned over what happened. That That's something that just doesn't happen. And I think it's been never, never, never has innings, ever happened like that, in no. extra innings where the first two guys make outs and then you go score six runs. But Ryan Roberts has been a guy that's been a spark plug all season long. Wasn't supposed to make this ball club, but yet he just hit his 19th home run last year and he also drove in his 65th run. So Ryan Roberts and these guys, certainly the little engine that could. We're going to watch games with you all night long. We're going to keep you up to date. Tomorrow could change dramatically. There could be more games. There could be fewer games tomorrow. The Diamondbacks We'll check their own fate. They were watching in Milwaukee last night. Oh, they no. were to a man disappointed. So far, the Brewers are looking with a win to clinch home field. And then there could be a one-game playoff between the Braves and the Cardinals tomorrow. Still a possibility, certainly. If the Braves hold on, they will have the greatest game and the greatest single game you can see. And that is a, a one-game playoff to see who goes to the postseason. So st stick around, folks. It's just beginning. And this we have also the last game of the season. We've got a lot of folks to thank. We've got you to thank. We also have an update on Justin Upton. Both sides of his head have taken baseballs, and let's hope he's all right. He's, he's in fine. the starting he's lineup fine. tonight. Ryan Roberts, certainly a hero. When we come back, it's the Diamondbacks, it's the Dodgers. In this, the final telecast of the regular season on Fox Sports Arizona. This is game 162, and it's next.
Fox Sports Arizona, the final regular season game of the season as the D-backs look to take care of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Well, lately, Justin Upton has been a baseball magnet. So far this season, he has been drilled by pitches 19 times. Take it back to Sunday, facing the Giants, and Tim Lincecum lets one get away from it, drills Justin on the bill of his cap right there. They made sure there was no concussion. And then last night, out in right field, bizarre play off the top of the wall. It drills the right side of his face. He was down for a little while. Kirk Gibson ran all the way out there to right field and finally decided his star right fielder needed to be taken out of the game. It's our Geico quote. Here's Justin Upton. He asked me if I was all right, and I told him I was. But, uh, you know, I, I guess I, the real story came out today. He figured that if he ran out that far, he was going to take me out of the game. But, uh, you know, I told him I wanted to stay in. And, uh, you know, he, you know him, you know, we butted heads a little bit. He, you know, he made me come out of the game. But, you know, at this point in the season, we, we want to be safe. And Jay up is back in the lineup tonight. I talked to him earlier today. He says he is feeling fine. Joe Saunders goes for a winning record as the D-backs look to close out the regular season in style. You'll see it all right here on Fox Sports Arizona. Darren and Gracie with a call in just a bit. The left-hander with 12 wins this year, over 200 innings, a 3.58 ERA. He has been, to say the least, a pleasant surprise. When you add Tyler Skaggs and Pat Corbin in the deal, talented young left-hander, certainly a win for the Diamondbacks. The Angels will tell you, too, a win picking up Dan Heron. And glad to see Joe Saunders seeking his 13th victory of the year. Final game of the season underway with a strike to D. Gordon. Boy, we're glad to have you with us. 0-1 is the count to the speedy and dangerous Gordon. Line drive, center field, base hit. There he goes again. Let's take a look at the Dodgers lineup from top to bottom. Gordon at the top, Justin Sellers right behind him. Matt Kemp, MVP candidate. Has had some Brewers knocking on his door the last week or so, though. It's Rivera, it's Loney, Jerry Sands, Rod Barajas, Jamie Carroll, and Ted Lilly. Skipper Don Mattingly. And his bullpen let him down. His defense let him down last night. He's got to sit firmly in the gut. When you fall asleep as a major league manager, you know what? Oh. A lot of people, the cynic, would say, well, when you're out of the race, forget it. That no. doesn't matter with these it guys. Hurts. It hurts. Games like that, that happen once every quarter of a century, those sting. And you remember them the rest of your life. 
Runner on the move, Blanco can throw, not in time. Henry Career, 40% throwing out opposing base runners, but Gordon's got 24 stolen bases in 55 games. Boy, he got it, he got rid of it really well. The throw is just about shoulder high, and Bloomquist just can't get the tag down in time. That's a good call out there by second base umpire Phil Cuzzy. In a few steps on the corners, middle of the diamond, straight up. They've got to keep an eye on Gordon as there's a strike. Almost looked like it snuck it by him. D. Gordon, 24 stolen bases, as we mentioned. A real spark plug. He's had a nice series. He's five for nine in this series. Exactly. Now six of ten. One and one the count. Roll to the right side, ranging and making the play is Hill. He fires in time for the out. Justin Sellers, quality, move the runner to third. Big time at bat. Let's take a look defensively at the Arizona Diamondbacks with Para in left field, Young in center, Justin Upton, as we heard a moment ago, out there in right. It's Roberts, it's Bloomquist, Aaron Hill, and Paul Goldschmidt is at first base. Henry Blanco is behind the plate. Took one right off the cap, Bill, courtesy Tim Lincecum, and right off the temple last night, courtesy the right field wall. Upton ready to go. And again, we'll keep an eye on the game in Milwaukee. Milwaukee leading Pittsburgh 6-1 to one in the fifth inning. Should they hold to that sort of a run? I would imagine Kirk Gibson will make some different decisions if the ball game goes along and Milwaukee does hold on and win it because... The Diamondbacks result, and you want to win every game. You don't want to end with a loss just because you, you closed up shop, but the Diamondbacks result will not matter if Milwaukee wins. That's exactly right, and this guy can make it not matter real quickly as well with one swing of the bat. Got one swing of the bat there. Got it thrown right by him. Good fastball in. 38 home runs, 124 RBIs. Oh, 114 runs scored as well. He's in the middle of an 11-game hitting streak right now, hitting... 450 during that hitting streak. And he beat him with a fastball. Tried to come inside. Saunders actually missed out over the plate with that fastball, but he got away with it. Kemp could only foul it straight back. He just hadn't had a bad week all year long, has he? No, he really that hasn't. Count. And he hasn't had protection at all times. Yeah, Andre Ethier's been out a long time. Trying to come back inside with a fastball. Good pitch, ran that one in there. Two and two the count on Kemp. Third in the National League with a 324 batting average. Leads the circuit in RBIs. Tied with Prince Fielder with 38 home runs. Prince hit three last night. Runner at third, the 2-2. Into the dirt, or did it hit him? I think it hit him. Got him in those shoes, and so Kemp is on. Threw a slider down and in. Threw it a little too far down, a little too far in. Left fielder, number 33. Yeah, right there, and look like the... Pinky toe. Right there on the edge of the foot, so he is on. His bodyguard since coming over has been Juan Rivera. Now, Juan's been quiet in this series. That hasn't been the case, though, throughout the year. Into the dirt. 1 0, oh, the count Juan Rivera. We always have to say it. Joe Saunders has rolled up more double play balls than anybody this year. That number is 28 right now. And he gets, for having the opportunity to get a double play, he rolls them up about twice the average pitcher in the National League. I think he gets to this point. You can tell me I'm wrong because you've been in the batter's box so much against big league pitchers. I think he sniffs them out. He hunts them out. Oh, without question. Stubborn sinkers, without, stubborn changeups. Without question, he knows how to get a ground ball when he needs it. 
and he knows the hitter that he can do it against. That one up in the zone, and it's fouled off. One and one the count. Joe making his 46th start as a Diamondback. He's got a 3.77 ERA in his 45 starts prior to this. That ERA, where does it rank, you might ask? Well, in comparison to his time with the Angels, that's a half run better. Wow. He's gotten a half run better since moving over. Fly ball right field. That should do it. Let's watch though. Upton makes the play. Now that's Gordon running. What am I thinking about? <laughs> Gordon comes on down and scores. The Dodgers lead it one to nothing. Rivera 46 RBIs as a Dodger. It's just good fundamental baseball by the Los Angeles Dodgers. A base hit, a stolen base. Sellers gives himself up by hitting the ball to the right side. Gordon moving to third. And then after a hit by pitch. Rivera just lofts a little fly ball out to right field. And just like that, it's one nothing Dodgers. That's where the Diamondbacks struggled last night, Darren. They struggled with the fundamental side of the game. And in the postseason, you're going to have a lot of close, low-scoring games. You have to clean up the fundamental part of the game if you're going to have any chance to play deep into the playoffs. Now, funny you would say that. Kirk Gibson's initial response after the miraculous victory was to look at his bench coach, Alan Trammell, and to say we've got a, a two o'clock meeting. We're going to gather at two o'clock and then there's workouts after. I want my pitchers working on defense. I have my hitters out there working. I want to work on bunt defenses. We haven't been sharp. So he noticed it as you did. A lot of talking going on too. Gibson wanted to lock some things up. Chopped and a foul ball. It's never too late in the year to hone your craft. Especially when that man's the skipper of the ship. Now he was proud. I don't think he wasn't proud. He encourages his player and he celebrates with his players. But he wasn't proud of the sloppiness prior to the 10th inning. That's exactly right. The other nine innings he was none too pleased. Into the dirt it goes. Gibby talks about the greeting line and in the staircase that takes your way up past the batting cage down below the dugout up into the clubhouse. There's a greeting line when a game ends for the guys that have played in the game that are in the clubhouse. And then they come up and they greet. He said last night's greeting line was epic. I wish I could tell you. We wish you would too. <laughs> but he won't. Pitch is low. Into the dirt it goes. Unbelievable what he pulled off. He was having just a forgettable night. Forgettable. He's had a run where he hasn't walked much. Again on the hands, real quality pitch. Joe does give up a run. We keep an eye on Milwaukee where they lead Pittsburgh six to one.
Casinos play slots with your Players Club card, and you can win up to $20,000 right away. Right now, get to Jack in the Box for a limited time. Jack's really big chicken sandwich, it's back. And it's only $3.99 plus tax as a combo at participating restaurants. Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. Go D backs, JF for MVP. I guess day to day you could vote for any one of them for MVP of this team. I mean, there have been so many heroic efforts. Now you just want him to be available after taking a couple shots to the noggin the last week. First pitch, Willie Bloomquist pops it up. Ted Lilly goes to work. He's a 35 year old left hander, a California native. 32 starts this year, a 4-1-2 ERA, but in his last half dozen starts, he's been really, really good. Finishing strong for the Dodgers. Curveball, he'll throw one of those. Big old sweeping curveball. Throw a slider, he'll throw a changeup. About one out of every 10 pitches is the pitch you just saw. That big balloon curveball. In on the hands. Buried that one in. One and two the count. Willie scored 44 runs this year. An on base of 316 to go along with that 265 batting average. He's been so valuable, Willie Bloomquist. Breaking ball. Good take. Not surprised he took it. First ASU Sun Devil alum to play for the Arizona Diamondbacks. He picked a Seems great Seems unbelievable, year. doesn't it? It does with with a program like with that. The program that they have. The two two. Change up, fluttered, stayed high. Bloomquist in this series is one of five. He has a, a very humble six game hitting streak. Seven hits in his last 28 at bats. And he looks at a defense straight up. Right side, Willie Bloomquist is on. Just a beautiful at bat by Willie Bloomquist, followed by a beautiful line drive to right field, letting the ball travel, and then just drilling it on a line out to right field. Willie Bloomquist just doing what he does. Offensively, the Diamondbacks, let's check it. Southwest Airlines, go to southwest.com slash Yahtzee. You'll win rapid reward points. Bloomquist still up to Pauly Goldschmidt, Chris Young, Ryan Roberts. It's par and it's Blanco. It is Saunders. Hill takes outside. Where would this club be without Aaron Hill, who as a diamond back has hit 314? He has, it feels like, gotten a hit in every game in which he has played as a diamond back. At least in September. The great value he has also is you he's a good hit and run man. Dependable contact guy with a runner on the move. That one popped up and into the seats it goes. One and one the count. Aaron Hitless in this series. He has walked three times though, so he's 0 for 5. But he's walked three times. On base of nearly 390 as a diamond back. In on his hands, a little cut fastball. They'll give it a look. It's a souvenir. One and two, the count on Hill.
One and two the count. Runner goes, throw down, with the slide. Willie's in there with a stolen base. 20 stolen bases as a diamond back for Willie Bloomquist. You said it. What a positive he has been all season long. A real shot in the arm. He's been doing this a lot. Ever since he's found himself in the leadoff spot consistently, when he gets on base, he finds a way to get a good jump, and he's usually standing on second before you know it. Two balls and two strikes to count. RBI opportunity for Hill. The 2-2. Two -two. To the right side. Willie will tag. He's got a good arm now, does Jerry Sands. Sands makes the play on court. a rocket, but it is way off the mark. And Willie moves up. Showed a strong arm there, but not a very accurate one as that one went plenty up the line to allow Willie Bloomquist to get in there safely. Meantime, things are getting crazy in the wild card race. What's going on? Things are getting really crazy. Craig Kimbrell blew a save. The Phillies have tied the game in the ninth inning. It was 3-2. There are still runners on. There are two outs. That terrific Braves bullpen hasn't been so terrific in September. Upton popped it up. Very shallow. Long run back. As Loney makes the play. Draws the throw. Perfect throw. The former high school pitching star. And so Justin comes up empty. Remember we talked about the fundamentals? Great job by Willie Bloomquist getting a base hit. Then he steals second. What does Aaron Hill do? He does a great job with the fundamentals. He hits the ball to the right side. Willie Bloomquist moved up. Now the Dodgers, Rivera, he hit a sacrifice fly. The Diamondbacks, once again, struggling with the fundamentals. Get the pop up, and now it's going to take a two-out heroic base hit or something to that effect from Paul Goldschmidt. So once again, Diamondbacks really struggling here in this series on just scoring the, the easy run, scoring it one run at a time. Big sweeping breaking ball. Strike one to Paul Goldschmidt. Craig Kimbrell's been taken out of the game, folks. He walked another batter. The bases are loaded. Phillies, two outs, ninth inning. Paul with eight home runs in 47 games. He's driven in 26. Combine that with the home runs he hit in the minor leagues. You've got 38. The same total as a pro he had last year. 76 homers in the last two years. Which is up and away. One and two the count. Out of Texas State. Well, he slugged homers every year. That's that unique lock and load approach. Swing and a miss to change up. Got him fooled that time. Arizona comes up empty. Single stolen base. Runner at third with one out. A zero on the board.
by Fries and Roll now for the Diamondbacks Rewards Program and earn points by buying participating items at Fries. Kia Motors. Learn more if you'll visit phxkia.com. We love Kachinko. We'll miss Kachinko. Gila River Casinos brings it to you. Go to Section 111 next year during regular season home games, and you'll find out how to enjoy Kachinko. There's a winner every time. Gila River Casinos. Jerry Sands is ready. He jumps ahead in the count, 1-0. and Hits it hard. Willie will take it on a backhand. And fire it on across in time for the out. So Sands, who is playing in his 61st game this season, is a 6-3 ground out. Now to the bottom of the ninth they go. In Atlanta, Georgia, now tied at three. Whew. Feels good to clinch early, doesn't it, Diamondbacks fans? I'm telling you. Atlanta on the verge of pulling one of the greatest choke jobs you'll ever see. They're leading the wild card on September 1st was eight and a half games. Ooh. Oh, that's painful. Love that city. It's a class organization. But oh boy. They're going they're 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 on the verge of I mean a, a, a gag job of historic portions. That pitch is outside. Let's bring in Brad. I hear he's got a great key to the game. Brad, what do you have? Well, it comes courtesy once again of Kirk Gibson. Remember the one Skatoma? That uh, was kind of so-so. This one is 12 and 8. And you might be thinking, is that a date? Was some kind of no? What that is, if the Diamondbacks were to play every game in the postseason all the way to game seven of the World Series, that would be 20 games, including tonight. If their record was 12 and 8, there would be a parade, as Gibby said earlier. So that is the key to the game. This team needs to go 12 and 8 to duplicate the feet of uh, Mark's team 10 years ago. That's a great key to you the like game. You like it? Yeah, well, we like it. I like it, but what what happens if like they lose three in a row? <laughs> then you won't have you won't be able to click off 12 straight. Well, and, right. and what you know, what if they were to win three games in the DS and four straight games in the NLCS and you know, that would yeah, be I, considerably shorter than that. So I, that's I'm that's being, I guess I'm being that Hades uh, <laughs> advocate. <laughs> I, I think he would uh, you know, sort of uh, Reconsider and come up with a different one, but for tonight as it stands the key is is 12 and 8. I'm all in with you Brad Okay I'm all in with a man who says he takes it one game at a time and quotes 20. That's why I'm all in with you Ah, That Kirk Gibson to right field just enough to puts it away Am I wrong Gracie about what there is no bigger one game at a time man the number Second 23 base, down there 14, He dropped 20 in our lap. I was gonna say he, he dropped 20 in our afraid, lap He's not afraid to look at the big picture as well. He doesn't like to let on he looks at it probably better than anybody in his in his job These days right now because he's taking a roster of Overall lesser talent and look at they're not sweating tonight. He's, he's been downplaying their success all year long Because well, in his mind, there's bigger fish to fry. Mm -hmm. You've won the first game. The first game is win the division. Get to the playoffs. Well, now the fun starts. But the longest game has been won. Now you got to win those short ones. Bouncing ball, and it's gobbled up. Willie on a cross. One, two, three. Go the Dodgers.
Skies, I hate to interrupt, but uh, we're in the midst of doing one of those uh, things that we, we, we launched not too very long ago. It's another Twitter chat for a couple of innings up here in our auxiliary suite. There you see the hashtag. You have to follow me at Walsh Todd to do that. I've got some ZZ Top tickets and Jimmy Buffett tickets I'll be giving away uh, with a couple of trivia questions. But the bottom line is we're just talking about the Arizona Diamondbacks as I turn and defer to, as always, my partner Joe Borowski, who loves these things. People asking uh, Joe already about the Atlanta collapse that you were just alluding to and trying to compare the Diamondbacks of 01 to 2011 and a lot of mundane, ridiculous questions as well. And that's what we're doing here for a couple of innings. So thanks for allowing us to promote that in this new, brave new frontier that we're embarking on. It is a wonderful thing, and folks get involved because a lot of you, I'm sure, watch the game and interact with the game. I like that. I like that sign. That's, that's good. And also, if you enjoy good music, that's a reason to hop on the chat as well. Some great tickets. One and one to count Chris Young. Now, what is the difference between this club? Statistically, it's a fun study. When you look at the Diamondbacks from 2010 to 2011. Young a mile high, but it's a souvenir. The Diamondbacks hit 250 last year. They're hitting 251 now. They had a higher on base, two points higher at 325 last year. They were a better slugging team last year. The Diamondbacks last year struck out almost 300 more times offensively. That one has popped up. And think about that 10th inning, Mark Grace, last uh -huh. night, and you folks at home. Not a single strikeout in that inning. Some ugly ground balls and some funky swings. And you put it in play. Stolen bases. They've stolen about 45 more bases this year. Swing and a miss. He's got a good changeup going tonight. Defensively, let's take a look at the Dodgers. It's brought to you by Lexus. The outfield. The infield. And the catcher and pitcher. <laughs> That's as simple as it gets. I like that. Keep it simple, D side. Well, here's last night's hero. He was everybody's hero last night. He was a hero all over the country. People really watching what he pulled off as that one is in on his hands. Hits it to the infield. Where Carroll is there and he makes the play for the out. The way it is delivered by the UPS store last night when this occurred. What did you say? What did you say following Ryan Roberts grand slam last night? Keep it clean please. Absolutely. What did you do at Facebook Twitter Fox Sports Arizona? Dot com. What was your reaction? Did you did you wake the kids? Was the dog barking in the backyard because you were hollering? I was in stunned silence. <laughs> Never seen anything like that. Here's Eduardo Parra. What about his year? Terrific. Much improved, wouldn't you say? Very much improved. He took it upon himself to play less winter ball, which, as you have educated us, is a challenge to do in your home country. He was in better shape than he's ever been and had a little bit of an edge to him this year, which fits right into Kirk Gibson's mold. Now, he's a good teammate, but he wasn't here just to hang out and slap backsides and be buddies. He wanted to be the starting left fielder this year. And he earned that right. The 0 2. Breaking ball out front, roll to the right side. And we'll hand out some awards tonight, by the way, later on. Team MVP, Pitcher of the Year, Most Improved. Favorite Kevin Towers transaction. Not Armando Galarraga.
Betsy will have yours in a bit. Team MVP, Miguel Montero, pitcher of the year. Ian Kennedy, most improved. Mr. Parra, favorite transaction, of course, is J.J. Puts. The come-from-behind win on July the 4th, certainly the favorite win against the Milwaukee Brewers in the bullpen and attitude, my favorite area of improvement for the Diamondbacks. And certainly, if you have some thoughts, drop them on us on d booth on Twitter. Bullpen and attitude. Mm-hmm. What, what, what do you mean? The overall well, club bullpen. attitude. I mean, just the way that they they went about their business. Oh, that's a foul ball, I believe. Is he all right? Theodore Roosevelt. Lily laying on his back. This hits the bat, folks. <laughs> Timber. Bill Miller was a lucky man there, too. Just missed. <laughs> the 1-1. One, one. Anyway, attitude. I mean, if you think about it, it was not a fun place to visit, to cover a team, to be in that dugout last year. End winning, of 9 Winning will do that, won't it? Yeah, you bet. It'll do it, and I think Kirk Gibson will do it. Kirk Gibson and winning. And his staff. Guys like Tom Baylor and Matt Williams and... Charles Nagy, you know, Charles is younger, a little bit more new age, if you will, because he's younger, but he's got a plenty firm fist when he has to, too. That's Joe Saunders. I think the one thing that changed, and David Eckstein said it when he played here as a player who was acquired, was the comfort in that locker room. Too comfortable. In the wrong way. Not comfortable like, hey, my teammates got my back. That's a good kind of comfort. But the kind of comfort when you're talking about attitude that says, well, even if I struggle, I'm fine. I'm not going anywhere. That changed. And that needed to change. What do you like, have? Like a, a sense of entitlement, maybe, if you will. Is that what you're Absolutely. saying? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You have the right to play when I tell you to. That's what Kirk Gibson has been saying. It was great the other day. What's that? When Justin was having the baseline test for the concussion and Gibson wanted to wait on his lineup. There's a bunch of guys walking around the locker room hoping to find out if they were playing. Mm -hmm. They had no idea. You have the right to play when I tell you to. They get so yeah. used to it going up there and not being told two days before and the I, night before. And I have the right to put a foot in your fanny if you have a problem with it. Into right field just continuing to own the Diamondbacks in this series. And you have the right to, well, to see my picks. Let's see him, pal. Right now. Okay. My team MVP is Justin Upton, pitcher of the year. I think it was very obvious, Ian Kennedy. My most approved was Ryan Roberts. Sure. And my favorite Kevin Towers transaction was the eighth inning stud and even the ninth inning stud there for a couple of weeks, and that's David Hernandez. And my favorite win was, well, a lot of people's favorite win. The clincher here against the San Francisco Giants. And the other thing I really loved was how much these guys improved offensively in their strikeouts. Too many innings were, well, just killed last year by the ill-timed strikeout. I think they put, did a much better job of putting the ball in play. They did a much better job of putting the pressure on the opposing defense. You mean like the 10th inning last night? Exactly. Diamondbacks led the league in strikeouts each of the last three years. They struck out 1,529 times, an all-time record last year. This year, they're sixth in the league. I mean, they strike out, but they're sixth. They've cut it by nearly 300. That is a difference of 10 and a half full games worth of strikeouts they have cut down. If you struck out every at-bat in the game, they, they games. cut out 10 and a half games of strikeouts. Good for them. Ten and a half. <laughs> well, Are you kidding well, me? That was a, uh, that, that's a sticking point for Kevin Towers and the decisions on who to keep and who maybe not to keep. And, and look, I think Gracie and I and even Kevin will tell you, we want to be careful. It's not personal and it's not one guy that caused no. it. That's not, it's not to say, okay, so get rid of Mark Reynolds. It's no, all his fault. That's, I mean, that's, that's not what I'm saying at all. Neither of us are. Mark Reynolds was terrific here. Did lots of great and things. And a fan favorite. But the, but the bullpen sorely needed improvement. And in order to get something good, you got to give up something good. 
and they ended up getting something real good in David Hernandez, in my opinion. And J.J. Putz is on the on the back end has been fabulous as well. So we were talking about what has changed from last year to this year. We've been over batting average the same, on base about the same, slugging the same. Huge difference in strikeouts, stolen bases. Last year's bullpen ERA was 5.74. It's two runs lower this year. Isn't that amazing. Two full runs per nine innings. That one is fouled off. And the starting pitching ERA has improved by more than a half a run. But it was the bullpen. I mean, it, it just, and again, it wasn't one person last year. Oh, it was lots of guys. For the love of Saul Rivera. Poor Saul. Kind of the poster child. Nice guy. Bolt down the line. Sellers is on the move. Look at Gordon Ron. Can that young man fly? That's an easy choice for Wallach. He sends him on down, and the Dodgers lead it 2 to nothing. Fastball, middle of the plate. Sellers just drills it down the left field line. He drives in his 13th run of the year because he had that guy on base in front of him. And he scores easily. All right, Matt Kemp. Has an infectious game, an infectious smile. Heck, he's a guy that's so diminutive and small in frame that as Kemp hits a high pop up in the left center. Cara puts that one away. But Gordon, such a little guy that that Gatorade cup, it looked like he was holding about a 40 ounce mug in his hand, like an eight ounce cup. There's not a whole lot to him, but don't tell Joe Saunders that. He's gotten a couple of base hits and scored both Dodger runs here this evening. There's Arizona and Andre Ethier chatting with him. Ethier with a minor knee procedure out for the rest of the year. Here is Juan Rivera. Fastball is in. One and oh the count. Now like kind of an older guy, like a bigger guy. Gordon must just be kind of power over him, like a big guy, like a thick guy like Rod Barajas. That went on a backhand. Long throw. What a play by Ryan Roberts. Saving another run. Roberts, a little heroism on the defensive side of the ball. Go ahead and make a great play. Stay with it, Ryan Roberts. And then a bullet across the diamond. Nicely done.
Chance to win a VIP World Series experience. Compliments of Scott's. Homer and Henry. It's time. Slow <laughs> breaking ball. Call to strike. 0 and 1 the count. Well, he's got seven home runs this year. This guy's slugging 515. Swing and a miss and a changeup. He's trying to hit that eighth homer of the year. Just for sake of reference, 515 slugging percentage. League average slugging percentage is 394. He's slugging 515. Slow curveball. Henry hit it hard. So we were talking about the diminutive D Gordon sliding frame and some of those big old veterans. You know, they look to take care of him, like Rod Baraja. You know, a little high five. Rod says, this is how I do it. I'm an old man. I take my little boy. You are such a good baby. Yes, you are. When you <laughs> when you get base hits and steal bases, daddy just loves you. <laughs> that is, that is classic. That is classic. <laughs> Well, Rod would know. He's got about 14 children. <laughs> oh, and one the count. Rod makes his offseason home yeah. in the Valley, yes? Yes, he does. So he's just he was, staying home when this one's he over. He's a former teammate of mine. He's he and just, his wife have a big and beautiful family. All right, Joe Saunders puts that one on the ground. And hustling through the bag. They just got it. Beautiful night. The roof is open. By the way, Gracie, just a, a quick check of the facts here. What do you got? Six children for Rod Barajas. No, nope, that's wrong. He's got 14. There's Andrew and Bryce. So needs to say he is he's rocked plenty of babies and he's still a young man, just in his 30s. On a Lilla, Rod Jr., Jace, and Aubriel. If I'm saying them all properly, I hope. And now D Gordon will be going home and staying at the Brajas house for the winter. <laughs> Kids will be excited. Dad's bringing home a brother. <laughs> the 1 0. 1 and 1 the count. Willie singled back in the first inning. The news good for Brewers fans. They're leading 7 to 2. They are rolling. We'll update you graphically with that in a bit. Right back to the screen. Now the Cardinals have won. They have won eight to nothing. The Braves have to win to force a game tomorrow. A one game winner take all playoff for the wild card. That game's in the bottom of the tent. One out in that game in the bottom of the tent. Michael Bourne is on first. Willie pops it up to the right side. Roney trickles into that coach's box and he puts it away. Oh, I tell you the Barajas family has got to be excited. Stacy, Daddy's bringing another one home. Look, look at Gordon. He's just playing right along. Set another place at the table.
It's the most important thing. Like I said, I told you guys yesterday, anybody, nobody knows who's going to win. I don't care. I mean, St. Louis won in 2006. They won 83 games. Anybody pick them? So you don't know. But what you do know you got a chance. And we know that if we um, kind of take our same approach, that it's worked really good for us. And we're just going to kind of let time tell us whether it, work, whether it goes all the way. We've gotten to know him this year, and he has been kind enough to be honest out there in the public with us. I'm not surprised by a single word he just said. Not though. at all. And I don't think, I don't think one bit of that was eyewash. Does he do eyewash? I don't know. I mean, I don't think he does. I don't think yeah. he just talks to talk. I don't think he just makes things up or pats guys on the back just because. He's real. I really don't. High pop-up, chased a breaking ball. Young is there as he puts it away, ranging to his right. Loney is 0 for 2. A ground out and a fly out. I remember last year. Diamond back at the time, Kelly Johnson had a night to remember individually. Hit for the cycle. Remember when Kelly Johnson hit for the cycle, but yet they lost. Certainly do. Gibby was none too pleased, was he? And all the adoration that was being laid upon Kelly Johnson. Now, Kelly Johnson deserved a lot of adoration. But he also, in that game, Kelly made it, Kelly made an error. And it, and it cost the Diamondbacks a couple runs, and they ended up losing by a run. Gibby was more talking about that than he was the, the other great things he did. So it, it, he's tough to please. Kirk Gibson, then that's just the way he likes it. If you're going to play for me, I'm going to point out some of the things that you don't do well, as well as the things you do. Popped up long run. That's in there. That hung up for a long time, and Sands has a base hit. Well, we're talking about the at D-backs booth awards, and my picks for manager of the year, Kirk Gibson, certainly. Prince Fielder won the MVP last night for me with the three homers. <laughs> really? Clayton Kershaw is a Cy Young Award winner, and I, even though he had a tough night tonight, body of work vote for Kay Craig Kimbrell as the National League Rookie of the Year. He's had a tough September. He has had a tough September. He had a hard-to-describe year. Nice kid, terrible pick. Oh, no, there is no wrong pick on the at D-backs booth awards. I'm not saying it's wrong. It's just terrible. That was a fabulous pick, folks, and thanks for watching it. <laughs> Who do you say? Well, let's let's go to it. Kirk Gibson, I think, is the obvious choice for manager of the year. Matt Kemp of the Dodgers. Clayton Kershaw is partner in crime. The, the other brave, Freddie Freeman, the first base. You know, I got to have a first baseman on there somewhere. Oh, certainly. Those were all good picks, Gracie. Well, thank you. I tell you, I'm proud of a anything you vote for. I, I think is great. I'm all in with you. This, this smells bad all of a sudden. No, I'm just excited for you. One and oh, the count to Papa Rod. <laughs> Cradling D. Gordon. I'll call him Father Rod. It's a little more serious. Two and zero, oh, the count. By the way, in Atlanta, they will now go to the top of the eleventh inning. Three three is still the score. Chipper Jones has had a game-winning double taken away in left center field. Brook crew rolling. By the way, they're about to enjoy the home field benefits. They're up seven to two. And yes, we're watching in Arizona. Hey, how about that? Goldschmidt nice staying play. with it. Really nice play. He was getting zero help over there from the Dodger bench. We ended up staying with it. Goldschmidt ends up making a nice play right in front of his Dodger foes.
Gonna miss that, Gracie. I may just knock on your door, yeah, have this, you say it, and then leave. This is my last game of the season, so uh, take full advantage, Darren Sutton. To the right side, down, and Upton will chase it, leave his feet, it kicks away. Hustling on around to Sands. All the way into third goes Carroll with a stand-up triple. And the Dodgers add another one. They lead it on top of Joe Saunders and the Diamondbacks. Dodgers three, Arizona nothing. Upton had trouble with it down the right field line. And once it gets on past him, turn on the merry-go-round for Jerry Sands. Justin gets over there, but he slides and it gets by him. That's all it takes to now make it a 3 nothing Dodger ball game. Oh, and won the count, Ted Lilly. No balls and two strikes to count. One and two, the count to Ted Lilly. Brad is with us. You know Gracie. My name is Darren. Thanks for inviting us into your home tonight. Line drive center field. Another run. The Dodgers lead it four to nothing. And I would imagine along with a 7-2 lead on top of Pittsburgh, the Brewers enjoying watching this one and their fans with the Dodgers. Bringing out the whooping stick early on. Well, this game is one inning away from meaning absolutely nothing. And that's a good thing because Joe Saunders doesn't have his A stuff at all here this evening. Which means I would I would imagine, Darren, wouldn't shock me at all if the bullpen starts to get loose. Somebody starts to get loose like a Zach Duke or something like that out in the bullpen. Maybe keep Joe Saunders as fresh as possible. Yeah, I tend to think when that Milwaukee game goes final, you're going to get to see a lot of the backup D backs in this ball game. Lily stealing. What is going on? Are you kidding me? That might be the dumbest play I've ever seen. and tie that the players put together. Is that a favorite image? That's a, a great B, image. C, or D to 36929. Is it Purple Pride? Favorite image? A reunion weekend? 
the night and the weekend the Diamondbacks wore purple and had some fabulous play. Another favorite image. How about jumping in the pool after winning the National That's League Western cool Division too. title? All hands on deck, or is it last night? The home run, and then respect for his manager, Ryan Roberts. Images of 1988 as he rounded the bases. What is your favorite image of this season? 3-6-9-2-9. That was pretty cool. It's a tough one, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. Pick That's one and go for it. All of the above. 3-6-9-2-9. Pick one and vote for it. The, and the fastball the is strike. Dirty Ted Lilly. Yeah, Ted Lilly trying to swipe a bag there. Whether he somehow missed a sign, whether I, I don't, I'm not quite sure what may be crossed into his mind there. He's feeling it. He was feeling. He's feeling good about things. Hmm. Kind of like when Steve Nash is hitting three pointers. He's feeling it. I know you like to say Shazam. The one one. Swing and a miss. One and two the count. So you're saying this is a good idea here. No, well, I'm saying it was one of the dumbest things I've ever seen a pitcher do on a baseball field and then go head first into the bag. Get a face full of glove and possibly tear your shoulder up or a wrist up or something. But all's right that ends right. Reno. Well, things are crazy, by the way. We have really focused on the National League as it should be because it's controlling the Diamondbacks' destiny and where they may go. But the American League is What's going on. Wild. I mean, some wild endings. The 2-2. Two -two. Bouncing ball. There's a base hit. Aaron Hill gives him something to cheer about. The second Diamondbacks hit. So, in the American League, it's raining. Seventh inning. Red Sox Orioles. 3-2 to two is the score there. And the Rays have rallied. They were down, what was it, 7-0, seven 7-1? Yeah. And they have battled all the way back to the bottom oh of the ninth goodness. inning they go. A chance to tie or win the game. Again, if they end up tied, then of course there will be a one-game playoff. Keeping an eye on that. The Braves still playing. Top of the 11th inning in Atlanta. 3-3 is the score. Milwaukee's about five outs away from earning home field advantage. And opening it home. Justin popped up to the first baseman in the first inning. You think about the healthy year he has had. He has had some bad luck the last 72 hours or so. That change up is high, but I think everybody thought. The key for Upton is can he stay healthy over the long run this year? And he has. Three times Upton has now reached 20 homers and 20 stolen bases in a season. No Diamondback has done that three times. Fastball inside. Don't forget, any time the Diamondbacks score six runs or more, Taco Bell gives away three free tacos with a large drink purchase, four to six the following day. A pretty good crowd filing in tonight. You start seeing those fannies I and agree. seats out there. It's getting bigger and bigger as the evening goes on. Way to go, folks. Upton high fly right field. Beaten away with a fastball. Kemp. He makes the play for the out. Well, Justin's got what a couple more days to get it going. It's been a struggle for him the last couple of weeks, offensively. Well, and specifically, I think it's only been a couple of games, but I think he might start questioning himself if he struggles after being hit in the head as well.
It's in there and takes it out on that helmet. Outside to Paul Goldschmidt. Hey, you talk about the Rays and those six runs they scored in the eighth inning. Fold walked in a run. Rodriguez was hit by a pitch. Upton had a sack fly. BJ Longoria had a three run homer. So a lot of little crazy things. Has Evan Longoria been? Wow. Slow curveball is away. Now, just to me, is bizarre. So you have a rain delay. Baltimore, they've got to finish that game at some point. Yes. Eventually, that season's got to end. And if the Yankees hold on and win, they're one out away from beating Tampa. Tampa sits and waits and hopes and pulls for Baltimore to rally. When the game resumes, the 2 0. Big swing at a pitch away. Puts it away. What's going on over there? Well, got to get this in quickly. Visit the official D backs online shop at dbacks.com. Get all your postseason gear straight from the source. The dbacks.com shop. Chris Young digs in. Gotta get something going. All right. I guess I'm gonna have to call for rally caps. Are you? You know, no, no matter the result in Milwaukee, and Pittsburgh has scored another run, but Milwaukee looks like the. Put that one away. The throw down and a stolen base. Oh my goodness, what just happened? Hill is safe, but in Tampa, Tampa has tied the game. Is that correct? I think we've seen it. Look at this. Who's hitting there? Is that Johnson? With two outs in the bottom oh my of the goodness. ninth inning in the last game of the season. On a 2 2 pitch, he saved the season for now. For now. His second. Number two on the year. Are you kidding me? Number two. <laughs> it's getting real interesting around baseball, folks. Let the fun begin. They just came from seven runs back. Oh, and two the count. Aaron Hill steals second base. And every pub in Boston, they're crying in their beer. Johnson was hitting 108 this year. Oh, my goodness gracious. 108. Swing and a miss. Change up. Down goes Young. It's a tough night to be a Diamondback, but they're tuning up for the playoffs. Baseball is great today, isn't it? Wow. <laughs>
What was the Diamondbacks defining moment this season? There is no wrong answer folks just something for you to ponder tonight. You might have been there. You might have seen a game on the road. You might have been watching on television. You might have been here at the ballpark and you thought boy I've never seen him do that the last few years. So just something to think about. As you watch the Diamondbacks on Fox Sports Arizona for the final time this season. What's your answer. Gosh. It's kind of tough to keep it. It should be plural huh moments. I'll think about it. That's what's fun about that question. I mean is it winning that game in Philadelphia. Is it the Saturday night is Gordon finally to get him out. Is it the Saturday night in San Francisco when the Giants were looking to win a series and creep back closer. And Ian Kennedy beat Tim Lincecum and Paul Goldschmidt homered putting the Giants in the rearview mirror to stay. I don't know. Boy. Sean Burroughs home run in Washington when the team couldn't hit it all. Ryan Roberts home run in San Francisco off Ryan Vogel song. They go on to win that game. Early in the year Ian Kennedy hours after becoming a new father throwing a complete game shutout against the Philadelphia Phillies. And going on to win 21 games. I mean he beat Cliff Lee. That's a defining moment. So many. Bouncer nice job Saunders up the ladder. And he makes the play for the out. How about when. Kirk Gibson and home plate umpire Bob Davidson had their yes volcanic exchange. That might be mine. Why? Was so, Why do you say that? That was so big league. That's what you said. That I mean, night. I am fired up just thinking about it. And it was months ago. It just seems like that happened, and this ball club just followed their manager. Please don't pitch to Kemp. Sorry to interrupt you. Well, they pitched to him twice. They've hit him once. He's flown out to left field. <laughs> Bob Davidson, Kirk Gibson. You can see the spit flying. Love it. That's baseball right there. One and one to count. The one one. Yep, fouls that one off. We told you Milwaukee is leading seven to three, and it's become a fun back and forth. These two teams may meet up in the first round. Moments ago, a picture from Miller Park sent our way from Brian Mikulajic in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. They want to know if you're watching Arizona after we wondered if they were watching last night in Milwaukee. Great fans there. That's a great message right back. Get him, get him, get him. You better hurry. Johnny Mack, what a play, John McDonald. Long throw across the diamond. No Willie Bloomquist. Am I watching? <laughs> Either way, Willie Bloomquist, a nice job.
defining moment for the Diamondbacks this season? There is no wrong answer. Is the answer. And whatever you recollect upon when you look back on this season, Ryan Roberts against Ted Lilly. Ryan, a high fly, first pitch swinging. Our IKEA text poll, the favorite image. Well, you love the the fist pump last night, and I kind of like that too. And the pool jump from earlier. Pretty good. Well, not surprisingly, Darren. Looks like the Diamondbacks are going to wait till their third time around to do any damage offensively. Yeah, here we go. Just kind of slugging it through muddy water at this point. That might be for Clayton Kershaw. Very well disguised, I might add. But some of us folks have been around a little while. We know better. Well, how many times does he have to get hit before it's all square? Well, it might be for Hung Chi Kuo. Well, he got hit for that the next night. Has Ted Lilly given you any indication he's been wild tonight or that wild tonight? No, not at all. Thank you. I'm just he's been brilliant. I'm tonight. asking you. He's the been question. throwing the ball right where he wants to throw it all night, and trust me, he threw that pitch right where he wanted to throw it. Hence, it begs the question: How many times do you have to get hit? Evidently a couple. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, what do you think? You think I'm wrong? I think it's time to even the score then. <laughs> there. That was after. I think he hit a spot. And yes, I I, I agree with you. It may happen next year in spring training because I think the last thing Kirk Gibson and his staff want is to get in a beanball war right before the playoffs and get somebody hurt. But I just don't think there's any way that that pitch got away. Because Ted Lilly has been terrific tonight. I don't like it. And we'll see. 2-0 the count. There's a lot of ball game left. Tom Baylor over there. He, he had the hard chest, according to Sean Dunstan. Understood part of the first time. Understood it. But, but a second time, I don't. I think at the end of the year after playing 19 times you just get a little tired of looking at each other. Here's Joe Saunders. Well the one thing and the, and the point you made and that man's been hit over and over and over again. Speaking of beanball wars, nobody wore one in that last series for the San Francisco Giants after Tim Lincecum hit Justin Upton in the helmet. In his brain. So, and again, I think logic has to prevail. There's plenty of games down the road. Ted Lilly is, a, is as old school a pitcher as you'll find. Oh, you bet. I've and seen you know him that. with retribution. And I remember you know being that. an Angels announcer when he was a Yankee. And, and I... I get it. I understand why he did it. And he understands why he did it. 
Popped it up, did him a favor. Boy, the fundamentals come back to hammer the Diamondbacks here again tonight. That's going to have to improve, Darren. CenturyLink high speed internet, high speed pitch. Here go these Diamondbacks. Third time through the order. Willie Bloomquist digs in. Not to be confused with John McDonald. Not Johnny Mac. That's what I get for going fan guy nickname on him. Usually I'd say John McDonald. Yeah, that's I noticed that Johnny Mac. Not a fan that I did that. Mm -hmm. We'll be good with the White Sox one of these days. <laughs> oh, and won the count. Well, you want to you want to take up. Obviously, you don't want to get into beanball war, but the Diamondbacks so many times when a batter is hit. Drive that runner in. It happens a ton with Upton. Do you want to make them pay? Sure. Low strike right at the knees. Oh, and to the count. The Dodgers have six hits, the Diamondbacks with a pair. And it is officially gone final in Milwaukee. The Brewers will open at home. The Diamondbacks will open on the road. They don't know where yet. But they will be playing either in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, or Philadelphia, Pennsylvania on Saturday and Sunday. And the home playoff games, you can make your plans now, Diamondback fans. Games three and four, Chase Field, Tuesday and Wednesday next week. Make your plans. Please. We know now. That one popped up into the seats and oh yes we were watching here in Arizona very closely. Seven to three the final. Congratulations to Brewers fans and the Milwaukee Brewers. Those two may just meet in the first round it's going to be a heck of a series if they do. Depending on what happens in Atlanta this evening is they're in the 12th inning now in Atlanta with the Philadelphia Phillies. To the right like, side. Nothing like game number 162 going 12 innings when you've got a possible one game playoff. Right to play another one. Tomorrow. Or you may just pack up your stuff and go home. New York Yankees, Tampa Bay Rays still going at it. They're in the 10th inning in Tampa. Oh, they've resumed in Baltimore. Have they now? They have resumed the game 3 2, Boston leading Baltimore. Swing and a miss. They come up empty. Para hit by a pitch. Ted Lilly, unfortunately, the Diamondbacks couldn't cash in.
Right, Gracie's no cheater, cheater, pumpkin eater. Yeah. Don't worry, folks. It didn't happen. Nothing big leg about that. Pretty sure we're happy for losing again. Two years in a row being a stinking loser. Well, I'm ready for that to change. I am too. Very much so. I have been for a while, to be honest with you. I mean, Teddy Roosevelt's no longer with us. No. It hasn't know? been. I mean, you're here. Yeah. Embarrassed every night. Yeah. By that terrible runner. Two and zero, the count. Bouncing ball on the backhand. Roberts fires it on across and in time for the out. Juan Rivera is erased. Want to start thanking some folks who have been such a big part of what we do this year. And start with our producers, Jason Lewis, Mark Rita, Joe Nicola. Jason, our daily producer, the guy who's with us on and off all the time, traveling on the road, leaving his family behind, and. Director Mitch Riggin to the number one director for our broadcast crew. Jason and Mitch do a great job together. Scott Geyer helps as well, as long as being our boss, a good director too. Mike Conley and Jeff Hallis over at Fox Sports Arizona. A couple of the bosses, they make things possible. The 1 0 is belted deep right field. Upton goes back. Loney crushed it way out of here. 12 home runs on the season for James Loney. And leave no doubt about it, it is 5 to nothing Dodgers. Oh, when you hang a slider at this level, they tend to go a long, long ways, and that's exactly what happens to Joe Saunders' slider. Oh, baby, those were fun to hit. Bell tied right down the middle, and he does not miss it whatsoever. Deep into the right field seats. And the Dodgers starting to pour it on. Into the dirt it goes. Pre and post game show producers Gregson Frampton, Graham Taylor, Lori Sandra. We appreciate the work they do. Right back through the box and into center field. Base hit for Jerry Sands. Our associate director, Josh Hall. Guest analysts, Luis Gonzalez, Joe Garagiola, and Tom Candiotti. Jody Jackson, Todd Walsh, Brad Steinke, Mark McClune. Great job, guys. A great job. And some interesting guys on the broadcast side as well. Rick Schulte came in and allowed me to some time off and some games away. I appreciate the governor for that. There's a, a fine weekend analyst right there. It he did is. a lot of Saturdays in my absence and I thank the Hall of Famer. Rod Barajas takes low. Mike Fetters. Bob Melvin was an analyst for a brief time. Oscar Soria, Miguel Quintana and Richard Sines, all of our Spanish speaking broadcasters. One and oh the count. Big swing. Joe Borowski has been fabulous in his first full season sitting job, out there every he? job. He put up with us for a full season. And we love his insights. And he's really good because he's a pitcher. And that's what's most important. Well, no comment. Here are the guys down on the other side. Joe and Todd tonight. The one one. Pitch is low. Jeff Munt, you hear him a lot on the radio side, on the pre and the post game. He comes and visits this television booth a lot. He, by the way, is the reigning Arizona Broadcaster of the Year. And Jeff Munt, we are fortunate. You hear him call Suns games as well on the radio. He does a fabulous job. The 2-1. Bouncing ball. It's a foul ball. 
Nice play down there by Tim Wallet, former Gold Glove third baseman. It's been a tough year for the Diamondbacks defensively in the coach's box. Yeah, Eric Young and Matt Williams have, well, continually let the team down with their lack of fielding. They can learn a lot from Tim Wallet. Great season otherwise. Swing and yeah. a miss. Chases up and out of the zone. Strikeout number two on the evening for Joe Saunders. Hey, our technical director, Jason Moon. Our audio mixer, Fred Dominagoni. Great sounds, folks, all over this ballpark. Big D, Dennis Lamb, our 8 2, along with D.D. Hill, Ryan O'Gorman, Tony Lamb. Thank you, guys. It is a challenge to make these two raspy voices sound any good in people's living rooms, especially with high definition and stereo sound. Owen oh, won the count, Jamie Carroll. To right field, that's down for a base hit. And they go to the 13th inning in Atlanta. They are still tied at three. They're not going to have any players available for a one game playoff if they win. St. Louis is done. They're going to travel back. Well, I guess they'll travel back home. May as well get on back home. Or maybe you wait. Head on over to Philadelphia. Help, head to, they may just head to Philly. They're going to sit in the. Visitors Clubhouse in Houston, Texas, and figure out if the plane's going to St. Louis or Philadelphia. They've already got their uniforms ready. <laughs> Do a little laundry and let's go get them. Here's Ted Lilly, base stealing threat. 0 and 1 the count. So the Diamondbacks play the Phillies on the road. They will open on the road. They play the Phillies on the road if the Braves win the wild card, right. which would take a win tonight and then a win tomorrow night. The Diamondbacks play the Brewers on the road to open if the Cardinals win the wild card, which would mean a Braves loss here in extra innings or loss tomorrow in a one game playoff. Either way, the planes leave in what, tomorrow? Tomorrow or the next day. I'm not sure officially. You and I are both off the traveling party as of tonight. I am officially D U N done. We're going to miss you folks in the postseason and until next year, but we can't wait to see you next year. We'll enjoy watching the playoffs with you. 0 oh 2, the count. And watching the work that Kirk Gibson has done. That one is outside.
managed to to being off the radar too. I could argue that we just go about our business. Like we don't need credit from people with their comments. We just need to validate ourselves through our performance. That's the way we look at it. And if we do, they won't have a choice but to give us the credit. If we don't, then who cares? We'll, we'll move on. It won't be from a lack of effort or we roll over. No, certainly won't roll over. There's no doubt about it. And love listening to Kirk Gibson look forward to the postseason. It is a lot of fun to hear the way he sees things. They're going to be underdogs wherever they go, obviously. Not sure they will be. Because and they, whoever they play, will have home field advantage. Philadelphia, the best team in baseball, record wise. The Milwaukee Brewers, the best home team in baseball, record wise. So they're going to be the underdog, but in their minds, they won't be. Oh, no. They will go in wherever they go, they will go in there expecting to win. Hill takes outside. Continuing to thank some of our folks. Handling video. Some of the great pictures you see. John James and Chris Cadell Sr., David Warner, John Brodnax. The 2-0 to Aaron Hill is outside on the corner. Camera operators. Holly Costi. Toby Finch. Kevin Kellogg, Ralphie, Ralph Kelso, Judd Mazur, James Rincon, Karina Riggin. She's a, a saint in her own right, putting up with the director of this show. Mickey Wheeler. Hi, Karina. Yes, you are. James Christopher, Pete Gordon, Trent Hines, Terry Jones, Mike Kellogg. Fastball inside. Tom Kioski, Curtis Towson. Tony Toasty. Hi, Mickey. Don Shea Brown and Jared Richardson's operating all those robo cams around the ballpark. Back to the screen it goes. There's Kev. What's up, Kev? Looking good tonight. Three and two the count. We have the best crew in the game. No argument here. We were fortunate enough to travel this country covering this team. We have the best crew in the game. And they've been here covering you when you played. There's Toby out there. Hi, Toby. Got that bubble gum going, doesn't he? Yeah. The 3 2. Belted left field. Did he square it up enough? Ah, nope. There sure looked the like it, didn't it? In left field and put it away. Elvis video operators, Eric Faulkner, Ernie Flodo, Greg Miller, Derek Peacock, Mike Raymer, Matt Weber. Hi, Ralph. Mike Zissis. And stay out, Ralph. <laughs> Rivera just gets back to the wall and makes a play. It looked like it might carry into the seats, but Ted Lilly still carrying his shutout through six and a third. I'm sorry, five and a third. Thank you, Trent. Nice going, Trent. That's always sad to say our final goodbyes, isn't it? It really is sad. At least we know we'll be watching some fun baseball with you fans. The 0 1. A little topper. That's a foul ball. Gives us a chance to thank Scott Rogers and Casey Straub, our graphics operators. Meg, Megan Buckin down there, Josh Weingrad, associate producers coordinating all the graphics. Box box operators, as you see Wade Miley warming, Nolan Lamb, Richard Raymond, some of our runners, Amy and Andrea, Robert, Josh, Garrett, and Mike, utilities. The Zach man, Kurt Zacker, our fine statistician. Zach, man, I grew up this year. Finally got to take you on a network game. Tommy used to take you every weekend. I finally got to take you on one. You've earned it. Otherwise, it'd been a big disappointment to him. 0 and 2 the count. He told me he didn't really enjoy it all that much. <laughs> High fly ball center field. Going back is Kemp. 
And he puts that one away. High up above Chase Field, roof open. This ballpark will look good packed next Tuesday and Wednesday, folks. Make sure you make it, clear your calendar, a memory for your children if, in fact, the playoffs and mid market teams will tell you they don't come around every year. Very true. Even big market teams will tell you they don't now come around. Yeah, you're right. I played for the Chicago Cubs, remember? Goldschmidt swings right through it. Our crew supervisors are Scott Kelso and Mike Cribbins. There's Big D, Dennis Lamb Dennis up there. Lamb. 39 years old this year. Taking care of our audio. 39, look at him. Doesn't look a day over 29. High pop. And into the seats it goes. Breaking ball, it's grounded foul. Stay tuned for the post game show. Our plays of the year. That's going to be fun. Love to see it go a long time. Oh, that's fine. There's a lot of plays. The 0 2. Slow curve ball from Lilly. It's a it's a great edit. It is a four and a half minute video of the plays of the year. Not quite sure who put it together. One and two, the count. But we'll do our best to find out. Uh oh, Paul, did he get that one? Nope. A couple of trips to the warning track. Three to be exact for the Dodgers. Ted Lilly's got them popping up. By Southwest Airlines. Find our affairs online only at Southwest.com. Your Valley Lexus dealer who invites you to test drive a luxurious Lexus automobile today. For more information, visit Lexus.com. CenturyLink Quest is now CenturyLink. Visit CenturyLink.com to learn more. A little bit more reflecting on this, the 2011 season is... Call to the bullpen, answered by Wade Miley. Brad, we'll bring you in, my friend. Well, thank you, guys. It's been an outstanding season, and from my vantage point as a reporter on the road trip, just amazing to see how this team came together, and, and I really put a lot of stock into what J.J. puts brought to this team. You guys had the at D-backs booth awards earlier, and just 
A little, a little snapshot. Earlier in the season, he blew a save, but we came back and we won the game in walk-off fashion thanks to Chris Young. And in the locker room afterwards, I was waiting around to do some interviews. And not only did J.J. not duck anyone, he was not back eating or slamming anything. He wasn't back in the showers. He came over to me and asked me how I was doing, asked me if I needed anything from him. And, and I said, no, we, there'll plenty of time to talk to him about the saves that he's racked up. It was interesting. All the young pitchers saw what he did there. Uh, you know, he was such a important presence, certainly on the field, but in that clubhouse as well. They realized that, you know, if you do something bad, someone's going to pick you up. That's what this team was all about. But also that you're accountable for your actions. And I just thought it was uh, just one of the things along the way, uh, one of the great moments. But that, I think, is what this team is all about. Th these guys learned how to be winners and learned how to be big league players, especially the young guys this season. Yeah, Brad, in a good memory, I would imagine you won't forget that anytime soon. Kevin Towers brought in professionals. He brought in veterans who respected the game and respected him. I mean, he ran into some former Diamondback players early in his introductions last year, and he was stunned with some of the guys and their lack of respect for a guy who's their boss. So, Very Brad, true. no surprise you were treated like that by a, by a veteran. Well, he brought in he brought in veteran players and veteran coaches. Okay. Some of the coaches, some of the, the players that were great players. Hammock is in left field. Calgill is in center. Gillespie is in right field. We saw that there. Burroughs is at third base. Willie Ryan moves over to second base. Goldschmidt stays at first. But this is called emptying your bench right here. Yeah, why not? Why why wouldn't you? They're not emptying their bench in Atlanta. They're not. No, no, it's 11:30 there now, and they're I'll still playing used, in the 13th I'll inning. I bet you they've used a lot of players. No, they they've used a ton. Good fastball there. The Philadelphia Phillies just took a four to three lead on top of the Atlanta Braves. We'll see if we can dig up the pictures on it. That would mean. If that score stays the same, that would mean a hundred pence, little jam shot. That was kind of Gonzo-esque right there, wasn't it? Scott Linebrink. Big swing. He's whacked the, the mask right off of Henry Blanco. So if Atlanta loses, there is no obviously one game playoff. That would and mean St. Louis wins the wild card. And that would mean gas up the plane and head to Milwaukee. High fly ball in the left center field toward the gap. It goes off the base of the wall. Sellers smoked that ball. Yeah, the LA fans yeah. are ready. Those been are a, been robots. A tough, been a tough year on the field and off the field for the. Los Angeles Dodgers. It's a cornerstone franchise, a classy franchise, but they got a lot of bad press this year, and unfortunately, it was well deserved. But not from the players, or their managers, or their coaches, but from their front office. Matt Kemp belts it deep left field. Matt Kemp making a statement. That is 39 home runs. That is 126 RBIs. Kemp doing all that he can do on the final day of the season to take a run at that MVP award. He may be. Does he have 40 stolen bases, Dan? He does, correct? He does, and 39 home runs. That was just his 39th home run. He's, he might have one more at bat. He could easily have one more at bat to go for 40 40. Bang. When he hits it, there is rarely a doubt. It's, it's 
It's a matter of how far it's going to go. He's fun to watch play. One Matt Kemp. Gobbled it up. Burroughs fires it on the cross. Yeah, they uh, they want to make a change there. They want to 86 to boss. That's kind of how they feel right now. They don't want 86 him. They want to keep him around as long as they're able to keep him around. And him too. <laughs> they look forward to watching that young man develop. Can't say that I blame him. And that man has developed and is going to get better. Ouch, right back through the box. Miley had to hop out of the way. That was scary. You don't want to get anybody hurt in games like this. Winding it down, but Wade Miley out there getting his lunch handed to him by these Dodgers. Look out. Pop that one foul up and into the seats it goes. One and one to count. Swing and a miss. One and two. The 2-2 two -two to Jerry Zanz. Get on the hands, good pitch. There to gobble it up and make the plays, Ryan Roberts.
Uh, Diamondbacks Live presented by CenturyLink. And, uh, Joe, we're going to use a little veto power, executive privilege, unless there is a, oh, I don't know, walk-off <laughs> grand slam. Can, can we just flush this game tonight and, and move forward? Are you okay with that? I'm absolutely okay. With Milwaukee winning earlier tonight, outcome of this game really doesn't matter. Let's talk playoffs. You seem ready. I'm ready. you got a ladder. He's got a ladder, guys. We'll send it back to you. We're waiting, okay? It's all yours. Looking forward to talking about that, I'm telling you. I mean, certainly worth focusing on as hard as this team has worked to earn this spot. From the moment they cut the ribbon on Salt River Fields and guys were out there getting ready. Wade Miley in part in big league camp and in minor league camp, all of his mates. Looking forward to talking about that. A good crowd here tonight. Upwards up above 30,000 fans. 602 462 4600 for postseason action. Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. Tuesday and Wednesday of next week, it is yet to be determined. It may be determined soon who they will face. As the Braves are scuffling right now in extras. That pitch is a strike to Colin Calgill. The 1-1. One, one. Slow curveball. Boy, did he dip and drop that one in there. Thing of beauty, wasn't it? There it is again. Cal Gill ready yeah. that time for the Ephus pitch. Hits it hard on the ground. And into center field. What do you got over there? Well, I'm not sure yet. Well, you pick one. Jerry Sands is in at first base. Ryan Roberts digs in. We'll get you foul ball. The pitch is high and away. Tony Gwynn Jr. is in left field. Trent Olchin is in right field. Big swing. He fouls it off at the plate. Well, it gives me a chance to tell everybody that the Diamondbacks are in the NLDS. Upper level postseason tickets started just $12. Lower level seats. Started just $22. Call 602-514-8400 or log on to dbacks.com slash postseason. Well, that was a good read, and boy. Impromptu, wasn't it? A foul ball read as well. I'm telling you. Get me involved in these shows, man. They become a lot more big league. Well, that's going to change a little bit next year. One on one the count. I'll try and talk even more. The 1-1. One, one. Swing and a miss. 1-2 and two the count. We want to keep thanking some folks because here in-house with the Diamondbacks, there's a nice list of people to thank. One and two the count. The Atlanta Braves had an eight and a half game lead in the wild card on September 1st. They are eliminated from the playoffs tonight. Freddie Freeman in the 13th inning, a double Bang. play. The Atlanta Braves are out. The Diamondbacks will take on the Milwaukee Brewers in the division series here in the year 2011. Saturday and Sunday, Miller Park. Tuesday and Wednesday, Chase Field. If needed, Friday, Miller Park. They're dancing in the streets of St. Louis, Missouri. The Cardinals have done it. They, they have come from out of nowhere. Champion. The St. Louis Cardinals, Albert Pujols, and many others led, have made it to the dance. And I'm guessing not many people want to 
face that club. They will open with Philadelphia. Roberts goes down on strikes. The NLDS begins on Saturday. The Arizona Diamondbacks to Milwaukee Brewers. Are you watching Milwaukee? Because Arizona is coming. Arizona was watching you very closely tonight and all year long. It stacks up as one heck of a series. The Diamondbacks won the season series over the Brewers, but they took their lumps from Milwaukee, too. Wow. Atlanta. Didn't see that coming. Wow. Well, what a gag job by the oh, Atlanta Braves. For the ages. I mean, for the ages. Joe Philly fan, they, they've been comfortable all season long. They haven't had to sweat. <laughs> they haven't had to sweat out anything, have they? Yeah, do the wave. Sure. Have I ever told you I don't like the wave, Ben? Well, you should. I know our director Mitch Reagan loves it. Does he? Oh, you bet. So getting to know the enemy. Paul Gillespie used to be a Milwaukee Brewer. They were 96 and 66 this year. They pitch well enough. They pitch pretty good out of the bullpen. They can hit. And they are 32 games, 33 games over 500 at home. Strap it on, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Strap it on, Phoenix, Arizona. This promises to be a heck of a Whoa, series. What a great opening series. Man. The 0 2. Head to head. Well, head to head, it has been the Diamondbacks. This year, anyway. Arizona played very well in Wisconsin. I need to check and see how many innings that Granke pitched tonight. If he might pitch game two, we'll see. So there you go, head to head. Either bullpen stellar. And by the way, did Ryan Braun play in a single game against the Diamondbacks? I don't think so. I don't think so. And he's going to get a lot of MVP votes. Well, not mine. You gave the fielder, did you? Mm -hmm. I gave mine to the well, to the MVP, and that's Matt Kemp. High fly ball right field. Coming on in to make the play is Trent Olchin. And he I puts can't it away. wait for that series. You watch it on TV somewhere. <laughs> You and I will be checking it out. So some folks in the front office we need to thank. Our boss, Ken Kendrick, Derek Hall, Kevin Towers, always accessible for us. Colin Maxey, Jim Weber. Scotty Geyer. There's Ken Kendrick. Leslie Farrell. The brains behind the whole operation. Where would we be without Leslie? Fouled back to the screen. Roger Riley. Bob Doty. Thank you, Mr. Riley, for getting us from here to there and everywhere and taking care of us for a place to all of us in the broadcast. And I'm speaking from the guys in the truck, too. Getting us some tickets on the road when we had family or friends. PR staff, Jim and Morgan and Casey, Mallory, Sean. One and one the count. Henry High pop to the right side. All right. Bring on the brew crew, Gracie. Bring on the brew crew. Morgan doing a fine job.
Haas getting loose and ready to roll. Howard Chaz Roberts air conditioning cool play of the game. Oh, D Gordon. He's bringing him home. Rod's got you a new little a boy. Beautiful baby. Yes, you are. D. Gord just puts his head on his shoulder like, yeah, I'm a baby. Tell you what. He's been playing like a monster in this series. Fly ball center field. Well struck going back on it. He's calling Calgill and he puts it away. Mike Owens right back on that horse. Yeah, why not, right? Got the win last night. Did Mike Owens? Yes, he did. John McDonald. Now John McDonald's in it short. I had him in there eight innings ago. Well, you've been the, you've been reading the future here lately. Well, yeah. That was unbelievable what you pulled off last night. We'll talk, talk about it another to time. To see that coming. You never know. Micah, by the way, I don't have to be a soothsayer to tell you that it's his birthday today. Happy birthday, Micah. Well, we'll say happy birthday. We just can't sing it to him. Right. We don't want to retain lawyers and all the stuff that goes along these days with singing happy birthday. Yeah, that's happy birthday family just bought their third yacht. Exactly. One and one the count. That went in on the hands. Yeah. Kind of feels like the last day of spring training. Grounded out. So, thanking other folks, Rob and Noah and Will. They do a great job entertaining you in the park. They keep Gracie involved in the Legends race, and he needs to win next year. Tired of my partner being put down every night. They do a great job over there. He's a straight loser. But I'm tired of him being put down. So, I'm Thank off. You. I'm out of it. Thank I, you. I'm, I'm not all in anymore with the bit. Thank you. It means pitch. a lot to me. Yeah. Have you, you having my back like that. Russ Emerald runs the entire ballpark. All the operations. He again makes sure that this massive facility will be ready for the postseason and our booth every night. There we go. That one sails behind the back there. A Fedorovich. Hmm. He missed him. Oh, he was trying to hit him, but he missed him. Then he comes right back with the slider away. He missed his spot. The one two. Chases a fastball high and away. Everyone in the coaching staff down there. They do such a great job for all of us and they allow us to ask a lot of questions they have answers some we can't repeat but they bring us in on the inside that is a big league coaching staff Kirk Gibson assembled that one is away and we want to thank all of them for answering our questions for giving us some guidance when we may be off base on occasion and you know what you know what we want to thank them for Gracie and I as fans for putting a heck of a baseball team on the Don't field every right. night. A lot more fun this year, wasn't it? Ken and Nate and PJ and the training staff. I want to thank them for keeping the guys healthy, keeping Justin Upton out there all year long. Three and two, the count. How about down below, Chad and Jimmy and Sean and Lupe, Scott. And Brad, they've all been here since the beginning. On a backhand, the play is made, and Micah Owings to the bag. Everyone, Charlie down there in the clubhouse as well. We thank all of you guys for the job you've done.
Another season game of the season on Fox Sports Arizona. Our coverage of the NL West champs is just getting started. We'll have sound and highlights from Milwaukee from game one on the ASU football game post game show on Saturday. Then we'll have a post game show after game two from Sliders on Sunday. Todd Walsh, Joe Borowski, and Chuck Powell will be over there at Sliders with reports from myself and Jason Lewis. We're headed out on the road, guys. And then for games three and four, we'll have pregame and postgame shows from Sliders Tuesday and Wednesday here at Chase Field. So uh, you guys are going off your separate ways, but uh, the coverage of this incredible team lives on here on Fox Sports Arizona. Well, looking forward to all of that. And Brad, you've done a great job all year long. Nice going this year, Brad. And Todd, as always, the veteran. Todd, Jody, Mark McClune. Hey, by the way, we want to thank Grant Trenbeth, who has lived through this ups and downs of an all-star game, the hottest August on record. As John Eli goes to work, he keeps the diamond organized, the head groundskeeper for the Diamondbacks. Player development staff, it's been a banner year for you. Championships and playoff bursts and kids coming up from the minors to contribute. See Josh Colmenter as an example. As Sean Burrow sits that one on the ground. Gobbled up and to the bag. Sands makes the play for the out. Anytime a Diamondback hits a homer, Fulton Holmes donates $150 to the Central Arizona Mountain Rescue Association. We want to thank all the scouts for all their hard work, and we're glad there are more scouts around these you parts got these that days. Right. Advanced scouts Actually, and amateur advanced scouts. scouts. It's not all just video work, and video all work is right. important. But there are guys that go put their eyeballs on players in double A and single A and triple A. There was a scout that recommended a trade for David Hernandez might be just what the doctor ordered, and that scout was right. The 0 1. What a scout that said JJ puts still got plenty in the tank. Or John McDonald could help you defensively at short. So we want to thank all of our scouts who travel all about the country. Good to have you back. Missed you for a couple of years there. One and two the count. I want to thank Willie Mo Pena. Really? Who hit Willie five Mo home Pena, runs huh? and won three games. I want to thank Cody Ransom. Who came here is no longer here in the big leagues who homered off of Clayton Kershaw to win a game. Swing and a miss over the top of that one. A couple of other guys who have wins on their record. Aaron Heilman won four times. He's no longer here. Barry Enright won a game. Armando Galarraga, it wasn't a pretty exit, but he pitched well early and he won three games. Espeling Vasquez has a win. All those wins right there add up to nine wins. For the Diamondbacks, guys that are no longer with the team. And 2.1 million fans, I think more than anyone, will put our bosses off at the bus. We'll put the scouts and the players all off at the bus, but we don't show up here without the fans. And we always have fun with you. I don't want to forget Kelly Johnson either. Well, good, good mention. Kelly I Johnson, did, and thank you. A guy that did yeoman's work. For the Arizona Diamondbacks. A couple of big home runs, grand slams he hit. Guys that had their had their season cut short as that one lined down the right field line. Oh, foul foul by Robbie Hammock. Stephen Drew, of course. Stephen Drew. Looking forward to seeing you in spring training. I'm looking forward to seeing you, Gracie. Well, that makes one of us. Anyway. Some more folks I want to thank for taking care of, of my personal late, late last minute ticket requests. Nita, Paula, Eric, Kenny, thank you so much for taking care of me and for putting all my family and friends in the upper deck. I really appreciate that. Just you? They took care of just you? Well, yeah, I, they were my requests, yeah. Did they take care of you? Sure. Bouncing ball. Yeah, I got to. Take care of the kids' grades and stuff. Make sure everybody has good seats down below. Wait, you got... <laughs> you got... Seats that good?
by Diamondbacks 2012 season tickets. With affordable and flexible payment options, you can become a season ticket holder today. Get priority for next year's spring training and get access to exclusive events with players and coaches. Season ticket holders always have the flexibility to exchange any unused tickets and can guarantee getting every giveaway item. Call today, 602-462-4600, or visit dbacks.com. So this just happened. Ta- please take it, Darren. I'm out of breath. Well, this just happened. Red Sox fans are out of breath. Are you kidding me? Orioles came back and tied that ball game off Jonathan Papelbon. Oh, so the Yankees and Rays are in the 12th. Orioles, Red Sox, after a long rain delay, are looking like they're going extra. And now Baltimore has taken the lead. They have beaten the Boston Red Sox. This just came in, folks. Watch. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my gracious. And they're showing the highlights in Tampa, and the folks are going crazy. Jonathan Papelbon just spit up a save and lost the ball game. If the Tampa Bay Rays find a way to score a run before the Yankees do, they are your wild card champs, and you will have two of the largest choke jobs for the 2011 season. One by the Atlanta Braves and one by the Boston Red Sox. Oh, my goodness. The eight and a half right now that Atlanta gave up. Yes. Is now the largest. Yes. September 1st, the largest collapse. Okay. On September the 4th, Boston was up nine games. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Tough night for Red Sox fans. Oh, now they're seeing it. Oh, my goodness. That's a live shot right there, folks. That was a live reaction. So now they know that that, that's right, keeping an eye on that Tampa game. This just happened moments ago in Tampa. And they can sell some tickets when this occurs. In Tampa, you think maybe going forward they can get a few fans? Well, you would hope so. What they need is a new ballpark. That's what they need. Or to move to Orlando. I mean. Well, do you think it would be better in Orlando? Do they have a ballpark there for them? No, they'll need to build one. And this, by the way, just happened. And these reactions. The reactions there. Right now they're saying uh, that's not very big league. And Matt Kemp with an opportunity to go 40-40 in this at-bat. This is a big at-bat, folks. Whoa. Mil Mascaras. There's the all-time list. Fastball right down the middle. Folks, stay tuned. Take it, Gracie. Evan Longoria 
has just won the game for the Tampa Bay Rays with a walk-off home run. They are your wild card champions of the American League. The Tampa Bay Rays. Steve Reich, three. Matt Kemp, no 40-40 this year. But, young man, it was a pleasure watching you play. And there's some Dodger fans and Diamondback fans giving him a big ovation, and it's well-deserved. Let's look at Don Mattingly. That was a special season right there, folks, by a special young man. And there's mom looking on. That's a great shot. What a proud mom. Well, you now have the largest collapse. A nine game lead for the Boston Red Sox. On September 4th. On September the 4th. Has evaporated. <laughs> Meantime. The scene in Tampa. So who will Tampa play? Will they play Detroit? Or will they play Texas? They'll play the Texas Rangers. After they have a champagne shower. One and one the count. I cannot believe how that transpired. Our Boston Red Sox fans see the score. What just happened in Tampa Bay? Said last night, I fist pumped to his bobblehead. I swear it, it nodded back, says Kelsey. <laughs> I said it in my best Aaron Sutton voice, are you kidding me? Which means the cats and the dogs all ran for cover if you hollered like I do. But thank you, Lauren. We appreciate it. I am just stunned at what has happened in the wild card races in the National League and the American League. Did anybody even think St. Louis was going to go to the postseason? No. I mean, about a week ago, did anybody think? It started, I didn't. It started to warm a little bit, but everyone was assuming that it was going to be Atlanta and Boston, and they'd hold on, and it was just too late. Ramon Troncoso. Well, we know the Diamondbacks are going to be playing the Milwaukee Brewers in the postseason. I'm sure that man's going to have a few things to say about who wins and who loses.
now it's about time for Paul Goldschmidt to homer. Would you like that? Yeah. He hadn't homered in a while. I think it's about that time. Swing and a miss. 0 and 2 the count. It's been fun to watch this young man from afar. To hear you call for him each and every night for about two straight months and then to see him arrive. And to live up to every expectation sure. and then some. And to be as down to earth and humble yet confident. Very nice humble young man. You're right. I tell you, his high school coach his college coach and most importantly his parents should be very proud of who he is. It's one thing to represent your organization more importantly you represent your family. And he is special in talent. But he also is just fun to be around. Look forward to covering him for a long long time. Two two. Popped up and into the seats it goes. Seven runs 12 hits no errors for the Dodgers. No runs on three hits and no errors for the Diamondbacks. 40,000 on hand tonight. Line drive. There's Paul with what is more than likely his final base hit of the regular season. Now he gets a chance to do it under the bright lights of October baseball. Don't forget, by the way, here in just a few minutes, you never know with this Arizona club how many hits still string together, but the plays of the year. And there have been plenty. Swing and a miss. Oh, and one the count. To the right side. That's what we're talking about. They're not going to do it again, are they? Well, they're going to get eight tonight. If you're watching the re air of this game, <laughs> you can go ahead and take the dog for a walk. <laughs> See, come on, honey. And she's like, you're out of your mind. <laughs> that's great. It's the rally cap, honey. See? Now, yeah, even that's going to make her chuckle. I like it. Into the dirt it goes. Yep. They're gonna make a comeback. I love That's him. great stuff. Come on. That one is low. Over the outside, three and one the count. Crossed him up. All right, 
then for a three run breaking ball. Look, honey, look. If he hits it out here, it'll be a homer. Uh, and that'll be a, a four run homer. It'll be a, another four run homer. And then just four more to go for the win. Bring that little doggy bag, you know, and clean up after yourself when you're walking Fido, by the way. Be a good neighbor. into a frenzy. Bang! Way out of here down the left field line off the bat of Cole Gillespie. Let's, let's go see our friend. Yeah! Look at that, honey. You were right, babe. I told you so. Nobody shuts out the Diamondbacks. Yeah. Only four times this year. The fewest in Major League Baseball. Good for Cole Gillespie. Now it's Homer and Henry's turn to try to. Keep this season alive. Or the regular season, at least. Strike one from Troncoso. Swing and a miss. 0 oh and 2 the count. I'm going to go out on a limb, and I'm going to say Henry Blanco was looking for a fastball there. I think you're right. That ball bounced out in front of the plate. Cole Gillespie was looking for a fastball, got one, and crushed it. Now Henry's going to have to battle out of a 0 and 2 hole. Into the there dirt it goes. Outside, three and two, the count. Going to have to go. 
go to his bullpen. Well, his little baby brother, Gerardo Parra. night and to see when it should be over and done with the team that really now literally aside from pride has nothing to play for zero but you know what we've learned pride means a lot to this team our APS energy all-stars are rally cap guy that's our couple absolutely I told you honey you've been doubting me all these years Mwah! I don't blame you we lead the league in love Darren Sutton all right, Sean Burroughs, go ahead and hit one. No, that's not a home. Don Madden said, heck with this. I'm going with Kenley Jansen. <laughs> <laughs> the, pit, the big right-hander out of Curacao, who just basically strikes everybody out that he faces. Hard cut fastball. The numbers are somewhat silly for Jansen. How about 53 and a third innings and 96 strikeouts? The Diamondbacks putting up a fist fight in the final game of the year. Getting ready for Milwaukee, who will have a fight in their hands, and so will the Diamondbacks. When you reach the Elite Eight in Major League Baseball, there are no slouches. Especially when you have two teams come from out of the clouds. You think you think St. Louis and Tampa has some momentum right now? Oh, yeah. They, they weren't expected to be there. Now, all of a sudden, they're going to play at least three more games. And both teams are hot. If I'm Philadelphia and Texas, I'm not, I'm not loving life right now about facing them. St. Louis, in the nine games that they played the Philadelphia Phillies, Dan, St. Louis, six and three against the Philadelphia Phillies. Just saying. Oh, I understand exactly what you're saying. He did not go. It is now three and two on John McDonald and on deck. That if that if John McDonald finds his way on, the tying run will come to the plate. This inning started with a seven-run deficit for the Arizona Diamondbacks. 
It was seven zip. And they're one pitch away from bringing the tying run to the plate. High pop up. This should do it. It put up a valiant fight. The regular season is over for the Arizona Diamondbacks. An incredible season. And look at this crowd. Cheering, thanking Arizona for their year. 94 victories this year. Kurt Gibson telling his guys, don't go away. we got to give our jerseys away to these fans. Tip of the cap to the Diamondbacks. And a very special year, to say the least. They're ready for the Milwaukee Brewers. You hope. 7-5 to five is the final score. Don't forget, as if you already didn't know it, the NLDS starts Saturday against the Milwaukee Brewers. Tuesday and Wednesday are the home games. Make your ticket plans now. We'll talk to you in the postgame show, but for now, it's time to take a look back in the year 2011. Here are the plays of the year. People say, oh, we don't expect them to contend. I say, how do you know that? Yeah. How do you know that? I, 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 I disagree. I call bullshit.
Let's go. Ian Kennedy is a 20-game winner. The Diamondbacks are the National League Western 